All right, welcome back to the BST Podcast, and we have Brad Ernst from the CDC Colorado Dwarf Cars. Brad, what's going on, brother? Oh, not much. Just living down here in the Falcon area right now. So uh, tell us a little about uh, the CDC. Um, you know, obviously it's the Dwarf Club, and, uh, you know, it's a division that's based upon from what, you know, in the beginning, I'll be honest, I thought it was an entry-level division, but... Uh, you know, the more I know about dwarf racing, uh, I've been in one a few times. It's kind of like a uh, go-kart on steroids, and they're very competitive. They're very fast. But it's amazing at some of the high levels of racing that you guys got going on and such as yourself. So there are beginners, but you go all the way to the advance, kind of like what you're doing and been racing all over the country because uh, from what I know, you've been to California, to Phoenix, and wherever else, correct? Yeah, no, totally. Uh, so... The dwarf cars, uh, well, I got into them probably about three years ago. And then, you know, the first year was just kind of local around the Colorado area, having fun. Um, and then Tony Steppenmeyer, he told me about the Western States uh, National Circuit, basically. Basically, everywhere on the Western States. Uh, it even includes Colorado, Wyoming, California, Arizona, um, Nevada, uh, Washington, Oregon. Uh, we have guys that show up to the national races from Canada. Um, so it is very competitive. Uh, normally we go to a national race and we teeter right around that hundred car mark. Um, and then there's a race that we hit once a month. Basically we start in February and the last race for the, for the series is in October, uh, in Marysville, California. And that's our season. I believe it's, uh, I think it comes out to like eight races. And and you're basically saying every one of those eight races has roughly 100 cars at it? Every one of those eight races, roughly, we run about 100 cars. Now, they split them up. So there is different entry levels, like you said. So there's the pro class, which I run in. There's the veteran class, uh, which I believe is 45 and up. And then so are you saying I'd be a veteran then instead of a pro? You, you could be a veteran, but there are guys that are the vets that still run in the pros. So, so there's some uh, guys they, like me that are still kicking ass at 50 plus. There are guys like you. I don't know about a 50 plus. I, I mean, but there, there are some guys out there. Me personally, I don't think I would go to the vet class because when they start getting up to that age, they really don't care when they meet Jesus. They've lived their life <laughs> and just kind of let it all hang out. You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they, they, they just hold down on that one on the right. And let's just say, Jesus let's just say, I on. believe, I believe, but I don't need to meet him right now. So I'm with you. <laughs> I, I would stick with the pro class. Then us younger yeah. guys were were a little bit more timid. Um, the pros do put down about uh a tenth to three tenths of a second faster in the quarter or, or in the in the race per lap um but those most of those vets guys depending on the race i mean they're right there with us so they're just as fast if not faster on some races so we, and then we have the sportsman's class which is more of your beginner the sportsman class is no payout just a trophy at the end um everything else is pros and vets just pay out trophies they keep track of your points we we have a series winner the whole the whole shebang so should we tell everybody now that you're going to be my new car owner and i'm going to jump in one of your cars and show you what's up or what we'll, we'll put you in a car but the first time you beat me you lost your ride yeah <laughs> i know how that goes that's that's happened a few times actually no i'm i'm actually excited to get in one uh, I'd, I'd return the favor, put you in one of our stock cars, whatever. So that's, that's a great thing. I'm glad to see that you're still racing and going and haven't thrown in the towel. Uh, we've talked kind of the national level. Let's go back to the CDC as well as a, a local level here with the tracks that you're running here, which obviously are the, the three tracks that we run, operate and promote, 76, El Paso, Phillips County. And then, of course, uh, are you guys going to honor as well? So you're going to be at the four Colorado dirt tracks then this year coming up in we 2020? Are, we are. Yeah, exactly. Around the Colorado area, we we uh, was actually last week, I believe it was. Yeah, last weekend we was down at the honor track. Uh, I think we had 22 dwarf cars show up. You know, I heard that. Now that, That's basically one of his winner shows like my uncle puts on at 76. So. Exactly. Just like the 76 shows, we took 22 cars down. Uh, and there was, there was cars that guys I know have cars 
cars out there that didn't show up just because it, it was a winner's race. It's not a CDC points race. So I think at the, the main points shows out at Calhan, um, up at 76, up at uh, Phillips County, we're going to have a great car count this year. We're working with the Rocky Mountain Dwarf cars. They have a great car count up there. We have four races planned um, at four different tracks this year in two weekends, uh, which is going to be a state's point series. So we're probably going to have B mains, maybe even C mains, depending on who shows up for this. You know, um, uh, obviously the two clubs, uh, it seems like for the last few years, uh, you guys haven't been playing well together, I guess. I don't know if you haven't been playing much together, but maybe not so well or whatever it is. But it looks like this year in 2020, you guys are playing the best you've played together, correct? That is correct. We've had guys at Winter Series from both clubs, um, down south, up north, 76. Uh, if there's anything at Callahan, I, I know we would have been out there. Uh, but the, the State's Point Series is something we're really excited about. We have some other big races coming up, too. CDC is like a big family. Um, it's a really tight-knit group, and the guys do a lot of outreach stuff and are helping each other all the time uh if a car goes down at the track you got five guys from five different cars over there working on it make sure they go back out there um some of the big things that we got going on though uh just to kind of show how we reach out to the community we have the baka race going on um <clears throat> for the the bikers against child abuse yep. they're all coming out they're bringing out the kids um they're bringing out the club members uh they're gonna come out we're gonna hand out candy and different kind of stuff they're gonna sit in the car uh that's at calhan i can't remember the exact date uh joe you probably know well i know you're gonna ask me but uh fred fred told me it's i think it's later in the year september it's one of the september dates isn't it that sounds sounds about right yeah um but that, that there's gonna be a great show um me and billy taylor uh we're putting together something for a group that he used to be a part of i think it's stout street smarts or something like that i can't remember i ain't got that in front of me either but we're trying to get 30 guys from that program uh we're we're buying 30 pit passes and we're bringing them in and and they're going to hang out with us just just the club trying to reach out bring people to the track um the more fans we got the harder we race the funner it is for everybody and that's not just for the dwarf cars that's everybody when you look up and you see a pack stands before that green flag drops I don't care what you say. You're racing that first lap as hard as you can. Exactly. And speaking of the fans, uh, we've talked about that in some of the previous uh, interviews already. Um, you know, back to what LeBron James was saying, you know, he's not going to race if there's – or he's not going to play basketball if there's no fans. And that's the same thing with us. I know that's why I race. So we definitely want to get this stuff out, share this stuff. You need to tell your friends and family that the season is still going to happen and to get out there and, and have some fun, you know, good food – drinks uh entertainment uh each race we're gonna have some uh, extra entertainment this year we're looking at doing fireworks a lot we're looking at having some bands out there some car shows and things of that nature so once again make sure you guys can do whatever you can to get the fans out i'm glad to see you guys are all together as a whole working together with the other clubs and uh, that being said here locally or i shouldn't say locally but whatever your cdc is wherever it's based out of where you're racing wouldn't you say it's safe to say you guys are probably average 25 maybe more every race <clears throat> yeah, I would say it's an easy average of 20 plus cars. Um, we had a lot of people that bought cars this year. We got new members that came in. Um, we got guys that live down in the Alamosa area. Uh, they have two or three cars down there. They joined the club. They've been coming up and racing with us already in the winter season. Um, so I know they're going to be chasing points. Uh, so there's, there's going to be a lot more cars. It, it's kind of crazy how it works. You know, uh, you hear at the end of every year, so-and-so sold their car and you're like, damn, that's one less car. But then all of a sudden three more just pop up and you're like, where did that car come from? Yeah. And, and that's good. That's good. And then when you add the other club, like you said, the, the States race, uh, I'm pretty excited with those as well, because that could, that could be 40 cars, right? Oh yeah. I, I think it could be an, an easy 40 cars. Uh, they actually um, have it for a point series at the end of the series. We're going to have some payout. We're going to have uh, some awards for the state champion. Uh, we're going to have food and stuff uh, for, for all the, the drivers and their, their crews. So I think it's really going to be a good thing. And it's uh it's only two weekends, but it's four races in two weekends. I, I think we start off up at Phillips County, and then the next day we go to uh, 
76. 76. And then we go, the next one is later in the year. We start at Honors, and then we end at Calhan on Saturday night. I mean, so it's Friday and Saturday night. So uh, there's going to be a lot of people traveling, and I hope people follow us, too. They want to see the cars. They want to see the, the 40 guys, guys struggling to make it into the A mains. I mean, because everybody's fast. I mean, we, we have our beginner classes, but depending on the track on a good night, even those guys can be fast. Well, I'm excited to see B mains and C mains. Maybe you know how, you know how long it's been. I don't know actually. I know there's been a few, but it just seems like old school racing. I remember back in the day. Uh, I don't even know if you were alive, but when I started out at CNS <laughs> in their street stock division, um, you know, we would show up and believe it or not, every weekend there was like 80 to 100 cars. We were racing like till 2 a.m. and there were like D and E main main events yeah, yeah. And, and you were kicking ass just to make a race. And then even right. even as the years went, you know, when I ran the late models out there and other divisions, I mean, that was that was half the excitement of going to the racetrack just to see if you could make the show. So uh, I'm actually excited to see some B and C mains, believe it or not, because I think that's what makes a racer even better when he has that little bit of a challenge knowing that he has to step up just to make the show because yeah, un exactly. unfortunately here of late a lot of these divisions with the, the car counts that they have people just roll in the gate and know they're going to start 14th uh, or whatever sometimes even better because that's right. all the cars there are so. Yeah, and then that's one of the things you kind of know the drivers that have a pretty good chance uh, at your local level. Like everybody kind of knows where they rate within their club or within locally. But then when you start bringing in these other cars and other guys, I've I've heard of guys from California. Um, they're like, hey, you got a two day race. We might come out and, and play with that. We got guys in Wyoming that I know are coming down for the two day races for that state's points thing. Um, the state's point thing is Colorado, but you know, those out of state guys are like, shit, I'll go take that out of that Colorado title being they, an out of state guy. They exactly. want that. They, they like that Colorado money. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. They, they just want to, they want to come and rain on a parade. So it really, when you show up, even knowing kind of how you stack up locally, when you see those different cars and guys, you, you worry about that pill draw. You worry about every position out there. Cause that, that position counts. The, the next position could be between you putting it on the trailer and you hitting an A main. Exactly. Exactly. Right on. All right, Brad, I want to thank you for being on. Uh, just make sure all your guys know that 2020 is on like Donkey Kong. Get those cars ready. Don't sell them. Uh, and, we'll and, be there. We're ready. And the season's right around the corner. <clears throat> I, I got all the cars washed up. Um, if I smuggle out my new car out of California somehow, it'll be there, and uh, we'll, we'll have a seat for your butt. There you go. I'm excited. I'm ready. All right. We'll see you, Joe. Thanks. All right, all right Brad. Thank you. All right. All right bye.